Hi, my name is Juliana and I'm a nutritional therapist at the Optimal Health Clinic. Today, I'll be talking to you about SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. By the end of this video, I hope that you have a good understanding of this pesky bacteria and how to address it. Gut problems seem to be really prevalent in our society and we definitely see the vast majority of our clients struggling with some really uncomfortable gastrointestinal symptoms. One gut problem that I see far too often is SIBO, which stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth. Let's call it SIBO for short. Your gut is comprised of the small intestine and the large intestine and it is in the large intestine that the vast majority of your gut bacteria should live. However, the system can sometimes fail and the bacteria can find their way into the small intestine where it doesn't belong. SIBO can happen through different mechanisms. For example, your stomach acid levels may be low and that is known as hypochloridria. One of the functions of stomach acid is to neutralize bacteria that may enter your body through your mouth. If you don't have enough stomach acid, the bacteria may survive and find their way to your small intestine. Another way that SIBO can happen is that when you're not eating, so while you're sleeping and in between meals, the migrating motor complex or the MMC, which is a peristaltic wave that happens in the small intestine that pushes gut bacteria down into the large intestines can sometimes fail. And a bacteria that is meant to migrate down instead grows up into the small intestine. So, for clarity, the MMC is often referred to as the housekeeper wave, and it is designed to move matter through your digestive tract. It pushes the bacteria and other particles through the gut, and it is a crucial component of a healthy digestive tract. We also need to think about the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve is a small segment between the small and the large intestine, and this valve is supposed to prevent the backflow of large intestinal contents that are teeming with bacteria back into the small intestine. It can be stuck open or closed, causing abdominal and digestive symptoms, and that can include SIBO. These are just some examples, and there could be other underlying causes of SIBO, such as autoimmunity, thyroid disorders, hypermobility disorders, and even nervous system dysregulation. Bacteria colonizing your small intestine usually means that you will be dealing with a whole range of symptoms. SIBO is associated with gut-related symptoms that are really annoying, but sometimes considered normal at first glance by mainstream medicine, since they can be very common. SIBO symptoms can include constipation, diarrhea, or swinging between constipation and diarrhea, cramping, wind, particularly very soon after eating, nausea, bloating, specifically after meals, acid reflux, food intolerances, and fatigue and anxiety. So how do we know if we have SIBO? Breath tests are the gold standard for SIBO testing, and it involves ingesting sugar substrates such as glucose, fructose, and lactulose, which are sugars that can be fermented by the bacteria present in your small intestine. If the bacteria is there, they will ferment these substrates and produce gases that can then be measured. It is important to mention that each substrate has their own strengths and weaknesses, and in an ideal world, we would use all three substrates to avoid the possibility of false negatives. So you may think that we just need to get rid of these bacteria for health to be restored, right? But the problem with this approach is that if we don't look into what caused SIBO in the first place, it is only a matter of time before it relapses. In order to truly get rid of SIBO and achieve long-term sustainable digestive health, the first step is to identify the root cause or causes of why SIBO occurred and aim to address them so it ultimately doesn't return. Here at the Optimum Health Clinic, we aim at not only eradicating the bacteria, which yes, is definitely important, but also implementing interventions that can restore the optimal functioning of your digestive system. And this can include the use of specific antimicrobial herbs, stress and sleep management, dietary strategies, and more. I hope you found that useful. If you would like more information, you can go to our website, theoptimalhealthclinic.com, and be sure to check out our other videos on this channel.